All good. Okay. All right, guys. Uh, great job today by the team. Um, love the way our defense played. Really, they, they continue to do an excellent job. I think a lot. Of, some of those points are not reflective of the way they played. There was really the one uh, little miss coverage that we had early on, but then they settled in and uh, they made it really difficult on them. With which we know is an explosive offense. And then uh, offensively, we was really pleased with Jared today. Uh, he did exactly what we expected him to do. Took great care of the football. Distributed. Got a lot of guys involved. We were efficient on third down. It's tough sled and running the football, but we did end up getting uh, enough and, and making them commit to that. And then Daryl Henderson had the long touchdown run. Got to clean some things up on special teams clearly, but don't have much to much time to enjoy this. I, I kind of peeked up and saw the score. So the Patriots must have been unbelievable against the Chargers today. And uh, that's going to be a great challenge. And, and really, um, I'm excited about being able to move on to them as soon as they get done talking about this one. Jordan? Sean, two-part question. Um, one how Jared responded um, from some of that uh, adversity last week with the turnovers and then specifically the composure after the special teams turnover and then that really crucial completion on a long third down. That was huge. Uh, that, was, that was a big play right there, but I thought Jared did a great job all day getting us in and out of the, some of the right things that, that we wanted to. We knew they were a really aggressive defense where there was a lot of pressures and you can really have some bad plays if you're not careful. And uh, he did an outstanding job managing, making plays. I thought he did a great job in our keeper game. Got some screens off. The third down and one screen that he got off the Cam Akers was outstanding because got strung out a little bit. Uh, but that response was big, Jordan, you know, because we didn't really start out. It called a stupid screen to, to Gerald. We lost yardage. And then uh, to get that 22 yards to Gerald Everett on the third and long, we, we went fast. He did a great job of recognizing it, finding Gerald underneath on a high-low concept to the boundary. And um, and that was really the, the, the big deal to be able to get points. And then Daryl obviously finished that drive uh, with the long touchdown run. But Jared was great all day. I thought he had great command, great composure. I thought the offensive line did an outstanding job keeping him clean. And uh, anytime that you're able to play like that uh, with the quarterback position, you're usually going to be pretty efficient offensively, but it is a reflection of the other 10 as well. Lindsay. Hey, Sean, I know you said tough sled in there for the running game, but it looked like Cam Akers did a nice job keeping his legs running, uh, legs moving on that nine yard touchdown crate. What did you see from him today? Yeah, same thing. I thought he had some really tough, hard-earned yards. You know, you're looking at it. He had 18 carries for around 65 yards, but, um, you know, that and that was really not including the two minutes. So he probably had probably about 80, but they were really tough, hard-earned yards. I think you're seeing a really physical player that's got explosion. Uh, this guy's going to only get better, and, and you can see why we were uh, so excited about him. I think this guy's got a really bright future. I think Thomas Brown's doing a great job. I thought Daryl did a nice job. And then, you know, a big third down conversion to Malcolm Brown for about 30 yards, um, you know, catching a check down when they kind of dropped them in coverage. So all three of those backs did a great job contributing today and uh, been very pleased with them. And then Sean, on Thursday nights, typically we see you guys set up uh, the training tables in the locker room and whatnot. Are you doing that in Arizona right now? Yeah, no, we're not going to be able to do that so that we can get back. Um, you know, we'll have to modify the way that we were able to do it because really all of our uh, Thursday night games kind of coincided with a home game in previous years. So uh, unless we want to wait three hours to get home, which I think everybody would be pretty pissed at me. So we'll start that re that treatment. You know, we'll have the availability to get that done a little, little bit later on. But if they are trying to do it, I'll definitely uh, nix that. Gary? I know you like that one, Steve. I at least see you smiling. <laughs> John, uh, from just from a psychological standpoint for Jared and your team, how, how important was it for him to come back with an error-free performance? Yeah, I mean, I, I thought it was important for our team just to come back and, and find a way to get our eighth win. Um, I really wasn't worried about Jared. I mean, this guy's responded uh, from different adversities. You go back to even just looking at uh, the trajectory of his career at Cal. So the one thing I wasn't worried about was, was him being overwhelmed by having a tough outing and then being able to respond, that was not, that was the least of my concerns. I was most, in, you know, not concerned, but I was most, uh, you know, interested and excited to see the response from this football team. And uh, they did exactly what I'd hoped and, and what I would expect based on the caliber of players and the character in that football locker room that, uh, you know, I'm going to get back to soon. And, you know, we know we got a great challenge because I, I can't wait to flip this film on to see how well the Patriots played against the Chargers. But I know the Chargers have been playing everybody really well. Uh, they're very they're, they're tough in all three phases, and for the Patriots to do what they did, we know uh, you know it's time to get ready for them right away. And then the uh, the Seahawks also lost, so you guys go into the final 
four games of the season and first place in the division. What, how do you feel about where you guys are heading into that stretch? Yeah, I mean, I, that means absolutely nothing because we got four games left. So what happened today has nothing. I mean, we got four games left. Uh, it's it's great to be able to see that, but you know if you don't handle your business this Thursday and then the following games after that, it's all for nothing. So unless you can tell me that they're going to end the season uh, with four games to go, Gary, we don't really care. Uh, I'm interested in playing really well on Thursday night now. Gary, all righty, appreciate it, guys. Thank you. We got Cam Jack. Hey, Ron, we have Cam for you all. Go ahead, Lindsay, for Cam. Hey, Cam, uh, can you just tell us what that touchdown run was like for you? Uh, it was expected, you know. Uh, it's just, you know, uh, kind of what I do, kind of what the team expect me to do, score points. And uh, that, that's what, that was a reflection of, you, you know, scoring points, offensive line, firing off the ball, and a, a, a great team effort. But what about, I mean, it just kind of looked like you kept your legs moving. Can you kind of tell us about your ability to just keep on going, even as you had bodies start climbing on you? It's all a mindset thing, you know, in my opinion. Uh, if you don't got the mindset to be a dog, uh, then the dog plays won't come to you. Thanks. Nick? Hey, Cam, can you talk a little bit about just what, how you're feeling as far as finding your, your flow? And it seems like you're really finding yourself in the offense and being patient when you do run and finding those gaps. Uh, just just being able to go through practice, uh, taking the coaching, uh, whether it's uh, w however it comes, just taking the coaching and building on it, you know, um, never settling, never um, thinking I've made it, never getting complacent and just just continuing to stack days on top of each other um, in practice. And it, it rolls over to the game. Eric? Hey, Cam. How much did it help you to get those those 20 plus carries in the game in terms of getting into a rhythm? Uh, the uh, more always up, you know, uh, I, I say that much. You know, um, if you get more carries, uh, I think it'll be, it's kind of easier to get in the rhythm. Uh, but um, that helped, you know, uh, the more carries I got, that helped me get into a rhythm. So, you know. And then you, um, Daryl and Malcolm all had catches in terms of the pass game. Uh, how much was that kind of an added dimension in terms of what you guys could do on offense today? Uh, it was definitely emphasized in practice, you know, um, us being able to do everything on the field, uh, whether it's in the pass game, the, the blocking game, uh, the run game, just being able to do everything on the field that coach asked us to do. And uh, that's what we did. We displayed that today. Thank you. No problem. Jordan? Hey, Cam, when you spoke earlier just about um, taking every rep so seriously in practice and putting good days, you know, back to back to back, what does that look like for you mentally? Do you have, you, you put, put notes to yourself? How do you remind yourself, all right, just be patient, keep stacking good days together? Uh, just, just, just pray, you know, I, I pray every night and uh, I go to work every day, you know, um, and when you do that, when you pray and go to work, you know, you really can't worry. You know, um, the Bible says you pray and worry, uh, you'll miss out on your blessings. So uh, I just pray, go to work, and I have supreme confidence in myself to go out and perform. Gary? Hey, Cam, um, how, how can you or do you sense like when Jared is getting into a rhythm and how that kind of affects the offense? Definitely. You, um, you can tell when QB1 is starting to fill in and starting to, uh, to dime the ball. And um, it, it's just a, a motivator, you know, uh, makes you want to go out and play hard for your QB, for the team. And uh, today was a, a direct correlation to that. Jim? Cam, how, how long did it take you to get comfortable with, with the NFL game? Is it been kind of a steady process or was there a point this season where, hey, you realize you belong, you can do this? Uh, well, it was never a question of could I do it? You know, um, I, I never questioned my ability and what I'm capable of. It was just a matter of when was it going to happen? You know, uh, just when was I going to get in that group? When was I going to going to start um, doing it every day, every every game, just consistently? That's what it, it was a matter of consistency. You know, was was it hard to be patient? Nah. No, sir. Uh, this is, this hasn't been my this isn't the first process I've gone through. Maybe it won't be the last. So, you know, um, got to take the bitter with the sweet. Keep rolling. Thank you. No we'll wrap up with Steve, please. 
Hey, Cam, what about the way the offensive line has, has really come together, even with Witt out? Because Arizona gives probably more looks up front than most teams, and you, and they really seem to control things up front today. Definitely. Um, like I said before, nothing nothing goes without those guys. And the way they fired off the ball today, um, in short yardage, um, pass plays, um, needed plays, they, they, they came to play today. And, and we needed them, and they showed. You know, um, we got a W, and that doesn't happen without the guys up front. Great, thank you. No All right, thank you, guys. Thank you, Cam. Thank y'all. <laughs> Sorry for the audibles here. We'll start with Jordan when you're ready, please. Troy, you can hear us and everything? Yeah, I can hear you. Cool, thank you. Hey, Troy, uh, how did a... Uh, second trip to the end zone in, in two weeks feel for you today? Um, it felt good, two for two. So I'm excited. I'm just, you know what I'm saying? Thank God for it and just keep on going. What did you see on that play? It looked like you knew exactly, you know, you jumped the route, knew exactly what was going to happen. Uh, just work my technique the whole time. And then as soon as I seen him broke out and I seen Kyler looking at him, I just went for it. I just jumped in and everything else played, it, played its part. Maria? Hey, Troy, to kind of uh, elaborate a little bit more on what Jordan was asking, um, you did seem to just be right at the right place at the right time. The defense just keeps getting better in the second half. Just talk about that again. Um, I mean, I feel like when we look at the film, there's going to be some things out there that we probably wanted to, you know what I'm saying, execute a little better on. But, I mean, like you say, we just got to keep on going one day, one, one uh, practice at a time. And when we come out on Thursday this week or – Sunday, whatever day it is, we just got to come out there and keep on executing and keep getting better. Like, we don't want to stay complacent in this defense. Claudia? You guys had a good plan for Mary and his offense. How tough was it to stop Drake and Edmonds? I can hear you. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. You guys had a good plan for Kyler Murray and his offense. How tough it was to stop Drake and Edmund? Uh, I mean, that's a good offense over there. They do a lot of good things, um, good coaching, good players around them. I mean, they got a team out there. So, I mean, but we came prepared and we executed and came out with the game on top. So, you know, we'll see them again too. Lindsay? Hey, Troy, I'm wondering what happened on that first drive there when, when you guys, um, three view DBs end up right next with nobody guarding really the, the tight end. What happened there and how did you fix it going forward? Um, I mean, it was just a miscommunication type of thing. And I mean, that kind of happens sometimes when you think you're doing one thing and then it's another, you never want that to happen. But I mean, sometimes it happened. We was able to come to the sideline. We got a good group, group back there and we talk about it and fix it. And that's kind of what we did. So, I mean, I'm excited to keep on playing with this group and, uh, and the ability for them to deal with adversity. I mean, we showing it every week. So that's kind of where we at with it. And then, didn't mean to cut you off, sorry. Uh, with you guys going into Thursday night football and with this year being kind of so wild and how you have to get ready for things virtually anyway, um, how do you handle preparing for the Patriots on such a short week? Um, you know, you just gotta be adjustable type of thing and figure out how we go do it. and. Uh, I mean, we, our coaches do a good job of helping us out and putting a plan together for us. And like I say, we just go out there and we try to do the best of our ability to execute. So, I mean, everything that's been going on with the coronavirus and things and how we've been handling the, the league this year is kind of like, I mean, you prepare for everything at this point. So just got to keep on working. Thanks, Troy. All right, and we'll wrap up with one each from Kevin and Steve, please. Uh, hey, Troy. Uh, Defense had great overall numbers, but we're not used to seeing you guys give up anything in the second half. How do you sum up the overall defensive performance today? Um, see, me, I'm the type of guy is always never as good, never as bad as you think it is. It's always, you know what I'm saying, somewhere in the middle. And uh, like I say, it's some things I'm speaking for myself in general, some plays that I left out there and some plays that I'm sure other people feel like they left out there. For example, the communication one, like, it's just little things that you always want to keep on improving, but we fight and we, you know what I'm saying, continually fight every week. And that's why I'm happy to be here. But you made the big play when 
when it was needed. Uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, but at the end of the day, everybody on his defense is capable of doing that. Mine was just, my number was called right then in the you know, right place, you know what I'm saying? Work my technique and did what I had to do. I was actually kind of frustrated because I gave up the other one. It was a perfect ball, but you know what I'm saying? I come back and just keep on playing. Like I say, just stay relentless and keep on fighting. The other one, meaning which one? Uh, I think it was a third and 12 or fourth and 12. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah. Steve? Terrell, mine's kind of a two-parter. What do you guys do to not let Arizona get comfortable with the RPO game? And is it good on a short week to play an RPO type of offense when you're going to be playing another one on Thursday in New England? Um, We just execute what our coaches tell us. And you know what I'm saying? They come out and they put a plan together for us and we execute. We talk about it in our second day. We talk about it. Everybody got to just do your job. And you know what I'm saying? When you're responsible for a certain place or you got a flat or anything you just got to execute your job and execute it at a high level thank you troy thank you everyone we have jared right here for you all appreciate it go ahead jordan hey jared um how do you feel you responded from some adversity last week and um, and then also can you take us through the the drive after the special teams turnover and you guys knew you had to respond and sort of kill some momentum and especially that long third down completion to Gerald. Um, can you take us through that sequence and what that meant to the, the overall momentum? Yeah, I'll, I'll go with your first question there. It was, um, you know, I responded exactly how I, how I expected to. I, I've been through a lot of bad things in my football career before and have consistently responded and this was no different. And another one that I just had to put my head down and keep working. Um, and then to answer your question there, the third down to Gerald, yeah, that that drive, yep. Um, we were kind of, you know, getting a little, they were getting a little bit of momentum. They got the punt return um, that they got back. They scored quickly and um, we kind of needed to make a play. I think we were playing well all day offensively and uh, Gerald, we got open in the flat and just put it on. Claudia? Akers and Henderson had good running games today. How well did the offensive line do to help the 100 plus yards of rushing? Yeah, I, I thought the O line had one of their best games today. Absolutely. They, they really played well. I thought they protected really well all day. And in the run game, we were kind of getting anything we wanted um, with the way where they were able to move guys on the line of scrimmage. And, and they did a good job, really good job. Lindsay? Jared, what's uh, going to be? key for you guys I know you got the game's ended but obviously Thursday night football the next one comes very quickly so it's key for you guys to recover and get ready for the next one yeah it's tough it's always tough I mean Thursday nights are, are you know turned around quickly we've we've con you know consistently played well on Thursday nights I believe through our time here with the Rams but um yeah we'll we'll, we'll have a plan I'm sure starting tomorrow and, and get ready I saw what the Patriots did to the Chargers so um, we'll have a challenge absolutely and then Cam Akers I know Sean said going to the second half of the season that he trusted he'd continue to, to play a role and a bigger role, but what have you seen from the rookie now? Yeah, he's, he's just continues to take great leaps. Uh, I think in practice, you really see it, you know, early on in the year, we, we had a lot of faith in everyone, but, you know, Daryl and Malcolm were just, you know, a step ahead a little bit in, in uh, understanding what we we're trying to do on each play. And, and at this point, Cam's right there with them and he's, he's done a really good job and um, he's explosive with the football. He can catch, he can run, he can do anything we want him to do. And um, he had a great day. Thanks. Jared, on your uh, sneak for a touchdown, you seemed especially amped while you were going through it and then afterward. Can you take us through what was going through your mind and the play and then after? Yeah, I knew that was a big drive just to kind of shift the momentum back. And, um, you know, anytime we get that, I hear that coming the headset from the one, I get a little extra adrenaline going. So I was excited about it. And uh, me and Blythe were down there at the bottom of the pile yelling at each other about it, which was, which was fun. And, and then gave him the ball to do the spike. But yeah. Uh, it was a good drive there, I think, is why why the excitement. We'll wrap up with Eric, please. Hey, Jared, two-party for you. First of all, what was the practice week like for you? What were some of the point of emphasis that you were trying to to, to get back to maybe from, from your days in training camp? And then Gary talked about the sneaks. Do you like doing quarterback sneaks? Because like you said, you, you seem pretty amped. I like them when they're on the one. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about them in the middle of the field, unless it's to end the game like that one. Those ones are fine. Those are also fun. But uh, yeah, the week the week of practice was great. It was it was like 
I always approach a week of practice. I think that's the main thing I'm getting at here is I don't I don't change anything based on any previous performances. I just keep my head down, keep working and, and getting better. And uh, my practice habits remain the same and, and you know, usually take me to where I want to go. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Jared. All right, guys. Thank you. Kevin, you want to lead off with Aaron? Uh, sure. Hey, Aaron. Um, we're not used to seeing the defense give up anything in the second half. It was a good overall performance. Uh, I wonder how you sum it up. Oh, it was good. We had, you know, some communication things when it was doing a hurry up. Um, you know, certain things, we wasn't getting certain calls. Everybody wasn't on the same page at the time when it was moving fast. So a little breakdown from there. But I think, you know, overall we held, held strong, found ways to make big plays when we needed it. And um, we found a way to win the game, so. How big was Troy Hill's play? It was huge. You know, anytime you guys out there making plays, um, they come up with a pick six when, when we need it the most. Um, that, that was huge, you know. Um, a big time game change play for us to get the momentum back, you know, to score, to, to get a bigger lead. So um, when we needed it the most, you know, he came through for us today, so. Thank you. Lindsay? Hey, Aaron, uh, when you guys get back in the locker room after that game today, did you realize, did you see the score of the game in Seattle and realize at all that you guys are back in the lead there in the NFC West? Um, we, when we got here, we, we, we heard about the score and we, we found out. So, you know, you guys were pumped up about that, but, you know, short week. So, you know, right back to work for us. So. Yeah, and speaking of the short week, what's going to be key for you to, to turn it around in a few days to face the Patriots? Um, recovery. You know, but at the same time, get on a game plan right away. Um, start studying right away. But, um, you know, get ready and make sure that we all healthy and ready to go come Thursday. Thanks, Aaron. Gary? Aaron, seems like you guys were uh, uh, frustrating uh, Murray early in that game, especially. What was what was happening there that was um, making you guys so effective? I think we was getting pressure on him. You know, we, we bottled him up. We contained him pretty good as far as, you know, not letting him get out the pocket when he wanted to to make plays with his feet or, you know, have him extend plays, certain certain plays. So I think Garrett guys did a good job of bottling him up, putting pressure on him, not letting him get comfortable. So we'll wrap up with you, Eric. Aaron, you're going to have to go from tackling somebody like Kyler to the, maybe the biggest quarterback in the league in Cam. How do you change your process and, an approach to somebody like that? Uh, well, you know, every week is a, is a different week. You know, going, going against another good quarterback, um, you know, you, you bring your big boy pass for him. You know, you understand that he's a bigger guy, so you got to prepare for that and, and get ready to um, – when you get your opportunities to, you know, get your hits on him or, or, or get the sacks, you know, make sure you bring your big boy pass. So. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Aaron. Yeah. Can you hear me? Oh. Uh, Good to go. Thank you, Robert. Oh, you got we got gotcha. you. Go ahead, Lindsay. Hey, Robert, what was it like just to watch uh, Jared Goff and obviously be a part of it, uh, just the offense bouncing back tonight or today? Uh, just just Jared playing his game, kind of the offense uh, playing well. Uh, you know, they had something on their screen um, throughout the game. I was noticing uh, just Jared's, like some of our drives, you see it was Jared's completions all green. Um, pretty much no incompletions on a couple of drives, but just seeing them just uh, get the ball out uh, under pressure, um, some nice touches. Uh, he had a nice throw to Cooper, um, had a nice one rolling out the pocket, uh, dumping off to me, but really just making all the throws under pressure, not under pressure, um, really just leading the team. Uh, and, you know, nothing could get to him today. And, and Robert, we didn't get to talk between last game and this week. I'm just wondering, like, as, as one of, Jared's go-to receivers. Is there anything you say to him either during last game, throughout the week, to help him get mentally prepared going into today? Uh, just be yourself. Just be him. Um, and of course, you know, find me. Keep your eyes downfield. Uh, but other than that, just really just be yourself. You know, he has the arm talent. He has the guys around him. Um, it's really just just play a game. You know, you you see this this type of play from Jared. Uh, we've seen it many times. It's really just just be yourself. Do what you do. And uh, he did that today in Arizona. Thanks, Robert. Thank you, guys. Gary. Robert, when when he is not making mistakes, you know, either um, 
missing passes or you know bigger things like fumbles or interceptions how how does that affect all of the offense when, when you guys get into a rhythm like that uh, exactly what you said being able to be in a rhythm uh keep drives going uh I think uh, you saw like time of possession was, was up on our end and uh, really just sustaining drives, moving the ball down the field, uh, finishing with points, um, really just just punching it in uh, with, with some touchdowns, uh, making our kicks, um, really just, just Jared putting us in position to keep the drive going and making plays, allow receivers to catch the ball with some space, uh, running backs as well. Malcolm had a big one. But really just um, getting dumping it off to his playmakers and uh, just allowing him to play comfortable, be comfortable in the pocket. Jordan? Yeah, Robert, um, probably an obvious question for me and a follow up to what Gary asked. But is it like sort of a ripple effect for you guys? You, you have a couple of clean series um, and start stacking those together. And then does it um, open up the playbook for everybody else? Yeah, I would say so. I think when we're able to start fast, get in the rhythm, uh, Jared's in a rhythm. It allows McVay to be in a rhythm. Uh, just everybody being flow and units to kind of know uh, the flow of the game, what to expect. Because we kind of know once we get going, we, we're kind of anticipating plays to be called. And then so once we get in that flow and that rhythm, uh, kind of everybody's in tune. Um, our plays are working. We know our counters off of that play. So really just uh, being able to start fast, get in rhythm early, allows everything to open up, allows everybody to be in rhythm and comfortable and uh, just just airing it out, letting everything fly. We'll wrap up with Kevin and then Eric, please. Uh, it looked like a nice light moment when Jared scored and uh, and then Austin uh, performed the yeah. spike. Was, were you guys remembering the Jared spike against Washington? Uh, yeah, I felt like it was a couple situations where it, it felt like that, honestly, um, punching it in on, on the uh, – was it another fourth and one or third and one we had with a QB sneak uh, towards the end of the game. But just being in those situations, don't, being in those um, situations, those point in the game, we know those are big momentum swingers. Uh, obviously, they had one down in the goal line. But when we make those plays, uh, we, we steal it off. Um, we know we're, we're taking it hard. We're taking momentum, um, especially do that here uh, and keep things going. Our first game against them um, just sets the tone. But I want to know about the spike. Was Jared smart to give it up to Austin Blythe? Yeah, I think so. After his last one, I think he lost his spike in privileges. Um, <laughs> pass, pass off the linemen. You know, they've been working hard all day, um, allowing our backs to get in, protecting Jared. Um, had a nice clean jersey today. Uh, it's always nice when your linemen get a spike and finish it off for us. Thank you. Thanks, Kev. Go ahead, Eric. We'll wrap up with you. Hey, Robert. I know you want your touches as a receiver. But how does it help your offense when the running backs are able to get involved in the passing game and, and kind of add another dimension? And how does it help you? I think it's super big uh, for for really everybody getting involved, especially our running backs um, playing underneath, um, making plays, great hands. But when they get a lot of space like that and uh, they want to, you know, take away our crossers, play play deep, play back, you know, you give our running backs a whole lot of space. Um, they make guys miss. Um, and, and they, they're going to take what you give them. You're going to give them a lot of space. They're going to run with it right down the sideline. A lot of yak. That's what everybody in our, our team does. Uh, catch it and go. Um, like I said, no, no drop off from our receivers doing it, our tight ends. Um, you give us space, we're going to make the plays. All right. Thank you, Robert. Thank you, everyone. Hey, guys. Thanks, Trav. Thank you.